Good afternoon, everybody. Follow-up video here to the NBA playoff situation. Um, I made a video like 20 minutes ago. I'm at work, so I wasn't following what was going on. But that game between Portland and Memphis was taking place while I was making that video, and it has ended. Uh, so now, if I would have just waited an hour, I could have made a video that was a little more <laughs> thorough about what the Lakers are going to be facing, particularly with their matchup. But I can do that now. I can put a whole video together on what I think is going on with the Lakers and the Blazers. So this is really cool. Um, I'm all right with it. Thank you guys for clicking on my face. My name is BDF44, and here we go. So, Lakers, Blazers. I've already told everybody uh, what I think is going to happen here. I think it's going to be Lakers in seven. That obviously hasn't changed in an hour. But I can talk about what's going on, which is the narrative that's being put out there, that the Lakers are in big trouble. The Lakers have their work cut out for them. But let's not pretend like the Portland Trailblazers are a more talented basketball team than Los Angeles Lakers. They are not. Um, I like and respect Dame and CJ. Uh, I think that Dame obviously is, is playing the best basketball of, of his career at the very, very best time to be doing so. Uh, he's on fire. And you have to account for him up to 30 feet out because he will pull up from the logo and fire away like Kobe, like Steph, and like several other guys. He has that in his arsenal, and he'll use it. Um, he, dri he, he drives to the basket well. He's, he's, his game is, is all-star uh, level, uh, superstar level, you know, and he is their best option, and that's that's just is what it is. CJ is also a very, very good second option. A similar guard. We know what we're dealing with with him. He's gonna. He's capable of putting up 50 points on his best day. We know he can go run up six, seven threes. You know, it's not an issue. He did it in this game against Memphis, as a matter of fact. In fact, from what I understand, he hit three clutch threes in a row against John Morant and screamed he couldn't be guarded by the man. So can't wait to see highlights of that. But, um, you know, hats off, first of all, to the Memphis Grizzlies on a fantastic, um, you know, run. They had a good run this season. So close to a playoff spot. Uh, gave themselves a real good shot at it. Shout out to the Phoenix Suns as well for being in that conversation, winning all of their games in the bubble. They should be given a medal for that or something. Um, something should be given to them for just sweeping the bubble. That was a, a hell of a, a feat. Uh, but but it's about the Blazers. The Blazers were the team that that that, that came out of that trio, and uh, they had they get us in the first round. A lot of people are saying the Blazers are going to win this series. Um, I, like I said, I don't think anybody would be surprised if they do. But the reality is, well, not the reality is. I want to phrase it differently. I think the Lakers are not as worried about the Blazers as the Blazers are worried about the Lakers. And the narrative that's being put out there is the complete opposite, which I think is a bit funny. Yes, do the Lakers have a lot to worry about with, they, with Dame playing this way? Of course. Have the Lakers been playing bad lately? Yes. The combination of those two things can make for some type of underdog-like energy. But Portland doesn't have LeBron James on that team. Portland doesn't have Anthony Davis on that team. And, and, and that is the true nature of the circumstance here. The, the matter of fact is this is a duo versus duo series and quite frankly the Lakers have a much more dominant duo than the Blazers do that's what it is on paper two teams that are are, are, are trajectory in different directions and that's why this narrative is as it is so Lakers play like crap and the Blazers have fought their way uh, with with Dame looking like Kobe basically but Dame is not Kobe <laughs> he is not Kobe However, LeBron James is definitely LeBron James. And um, that's, that's what I expect to see out there. Dame, and I said it in the last video, Dame won two series on buzzer shots, which I think is one of the greatest things you'll ever see. He did it against the Rockets, and he did it against the Thunder, sending Paul George and, and Westbrook uh, away from each other forever. <laughs> so... We know that he's capable of beating great teams with, with, his, with his clutch uh, energy and with his ability. But did I mention that LeBron James was in any one of those series? No. Did I mention that Anthony Davis was involved in either one of those series? No. He didn't beat those guys. Those guys are better than the guys he beat. 
<laughs> with those shots. He's, those guys are better than anyone he's ever beat. So what that means is if Dame Lillard wins this series, it would be the greatest accomplishment in his career thus far. Do you guys understand that? Winning the first round of the bubble series will be Dame's greatest accomplishment yet. And that's not crapping on Dame in any way, shape, or form. That's just simply saying Dame is not on that great of a team. He never has been on a great team. Dame has been in Portland his entire career, and Portland has been just a little better than average the entire time. They're a little better than average right now, which is why they're in the eighth spot. People need to chill. People need to seriously chill. Now, like I said, I do think this series is going seven. Wouldn't be surprised if Dame wins it at all because the Lakers have been sucking lately. That's just not, that's not uh, uh, something I can dispute. But the narrative surrounding the, the series, it definitely needs to be reeled in some. People need to chill out. People need to come back around and recognizing what it is that's actually happening here. The Trailblazers, the 18, have run into LeBron and AD in the first round. And because of it, they are going home. <laughs> okay? Let me just be the one to tell you guys. They are going home. And the reason why I'm so certain that we're going to win this series, even though I've picked us to win it in seven, is because you ha you get seven games, or however many games this goes, to plan for that one singular opponent. The Lakers are going to be able to make adjustments, even if they have to go big and put LeBron James at the two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to, like, match up, put a huge lineup on the floor just to match up with them. If we are forced to do that, we can. That's the difference between what Portland has with their combination of lineups and our lineups. We just have better lineups to try to match up with what they have than they have to match up with what we have. Now, I will acknowledge that Zach Collins is back. That's a big deal. Zach Collins is a, is a, a center who was drafted early a couple years ago, um, and he has a lot of upside. Started coming along, showing what he can do in Portland, but has missed a lot of time. He's back now, so that's another big body we got to deal with. Nurkic, um, sending prayers Nurkic away. I heard that he lost his grandmother to covid I don't know how that's going to affect the series, uh, and I won't speculate. Whatever he decides to do, I'll support, um, and that's the end of that. But that's a big body. If he is available for Portland, you got to deal with him. Uh, and, of course, Whiteside. We all know about Whiteside, what time it is with him. Um, so they have centers like we have centers. That's something the Lakers are going to have to be really, really cognizant of. Um, the size difference is not that serious. Talent between those size players is, is, is drastic because AD is far greater than anybody they have. But, you know, as far as just the bigness of them all, yeah, a, uh, Dwight's going to have his hands full. JaVale's going to have his hands full. And so is AD. They're going to have to uh, deal with physical bigs, you know, for, for, for however many games this goes. And they could, they could, they could create some problems for us. I, I definitely foresee us having issues with their bigs, particularly rebounding the ball since we have not been rebounding the ball well at all in the bubble. Um, but just like anything else, man, you got to remember that the Lakers are full of veteran champions. The whole team, even some of the guys on the back of the bench have won rings with other teams. A uh, guy like Quinn Cook won championships. So what you need to always remember is that the experience of the Los Angeles Lakers is going to come play a factor in this series. Now, what does experience mean when you don't have to travel? Who knows? Nobody's ever been through the bubble. That counts. But I'm talking about the intensity of the type of basketball that we're going to be going up against. Um... Portland has their experience, of course, but nothing like L.A., nothing like these Lakers. So that matters to me. A guy to keep an eye on in Portland, Gary Trent Jr. He's been shooting the ball extremely well. He's another guy that's going to be able to create some problems for the Lakers. We're going to have to keep an eye on that guy. We can't just think he's a, a C.J. and Dame show. They have a third player that can really put up some points and stretch the floor quite a bit um, if we don't keep if we don't keep an eye on him, he can beat us himself. Like, he, he can be the reason we lose a game or two if we allow it to happen. He reminds me of Bonzi Wells. We need to keep an eye on that guy. Um, and for the Lakers, the guy that I'm looking at in this series who really needs to impose his will is Anthony Davis. Um, and LeBron James. I think the good thing about this series for the Lakers is both of our stars have favorable matchups. Now, granted, when do they not? <laughs> when you're talking about these two players. But I think particularly in this series, it's pretty 
it's pretty substantial. Um, Carmelo Anthony's going to be on the floor down there. You keep an eye on him. Volatile talent, as I like to say. He can outplay his position at any moment because he's simply a Hall of Fame player. Even though he's a little long in the tooth, a little muscle memory, he gets that kickstand going. You don't be surprised to see him get a 30-point game in the series. I wouldn't be. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot. They have a lot of. They have some weapons, you know. I, I respect Portland's roster. I think they have a pretty solid roster right now, um, but not better than ours. Not better than ours. Um, and I just, I honestly don't see AD on a con- in a contract year getting knocked out of the first round with LeBron James as a teammate. I don't see that. Um, I don't. I, and I know this is this sucks, but it, this is kind of how I see it. I don't think the NBA is going to allow that. I think we're going to get a lot of favorable calls in this series. Um, history tells me that the NBA is just going to simply try to shoe us out of this series. Uh, but you never know. Dame is is, is a is, is a real nice draw right now. I think an upset in a bubble would be great for TV. I think people would love an upset um, in this round. So you never know. Maybe the NBA has different plans, but I just don't think that they want AD and LeBron out of the first round, <laughs> out of the bubble that soon. I just don't think that's good for anybody um, in the front office of the league. So I would like to think that the NBA is in the up and up, but I've watched this game my whole life. They manipulate stuff sometimes just because they want certain matchups. So I would expect that they want the Lakers to come out of this series. Um, but in the event I'm wrong about that, I still think the X's and O's benefit the Lakers in the end because as much as I love Dame dropping 60 on our heads, CJ, if he gets hot at the same time Dame does, that's like 115 points right there. Like, those two players are really special. Um, AD and LeBron are just going to be too much, I think. I think it's going to be too much. Um, And that's that, you know. That's that. I, I, I think the Lakers are going to go seven with this team. Um, I don't want them to as a fan. I would love to see the series in quickly. But this is a good test for the Lakers. If they're able to get out of this round, um, they will have been battle tested. And not every team is battle tested in the first round this, in these playoffs, especially in the Eastern Conference. There's a couple shoe ins going on around here. But the Lakers are not in one of them. And so um, I kind of like that for the type of intensity that we need to start off with, the type of tone we need to set for these playoffs uh, if we want to not get upset. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is a good playoff matchup. Um, you know, the Lakers are, 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 are a team that haven't been to playoffs for, what, seven years, eight years? So that's something to be said right here and now. As a fan, I'm very pleased that we're back in the playoff hunt. Uh, as a uh, playoff picture, as the first seed, no less. It's a beautiful thing. But um, if we don't get out of the first round, it's just pretty much nothing. It's all for nothing. So, yeah, man. Dame, bring your best. Bring your best, bro. I know Skip and lit a fire under your backside. I get it. Clippers and lit a fire under your backside. You probably really, really want to kill them. Don't you worry. We will. My name is BDF44. I'm out. <laughs>